Uh, hi there, my name is Emmanuel. I'm a postdoctoral scientist at the University of Cape Town, where I work in the Biofarming Research Unit, which is a lab that's looking to explore plants as a potential means of making vaccines. And uh, our reason for this is because we lack infrastructure in sub-Saharan Africa uh, to produce our own vaccines, which has really resulted in this reliance on other countries to provide vaccines for us. So essentially we're trying to make these implants as a cheaper source of vaccines um, so that we could have independent manufacturing capacity in Africa. So it's actually a common misconception that the vaccines were rushed. And it's important to understand that the vaccine development process um, is quite a standardized process. First people show safety and then people progress to safety in the target population. And then it's only um, after that safety has actually been documented that we can progress to large enough numbers to show efficacy. So what people often miss is that the technology was developed over several decades. It's not that we just came along and developed mRNA vaccines within 18 months. The underlying technology took a couple of decades uh, to develop and a lot of the development processes often start in academia and then they progress to a point where they can be spun out into a company. And a, a major reason that the vaccines could be developed so fast is because of massive international cooperation from government, from various funding bodies, um, from industry players, from academic labs, who all came together to ensure that we could streamline this process as quickly as we could. So that doesn't mean that the normal phases of safety and efficacy testing didn't happen. If you think about the number of people right now, we've had something like six billion people receive doses. And that's a very large sample size to establish safety. Whereas if you think about other diseases like Ebola, um, which only occur in sporadic outbreaks in, in very certain settings, the number of people tested for those vaccines would be considerably smaller. But with SARS-CoV-2, we've really, we've got a massive sample of people from all sorts of different genetic backgrounds, all sorts of different countries, all sorts of different risk profiles. It would be hard to think of a vaccine that has been tested uh, so rigorously um, in the modern age like this.